and here the Hackaday area. Um, yeah. You playing Pac-Man? Yeah, so it's one pixel Pac-Man. So cell phones are so good these days. If you want to uh, make a video game, people are going to be disappointed with the display you use because how can you beat like a really 400 pixel density? Yeah. So when I started thinking about this, I'm like, why don't I just take a great retro game and make the display worse? So, nice. uh, pack, so how many pixels are there? 32 by 32. That's awesome. And if you, and how did, what is this? What is this right here? Yeah. So we're actually showing off like um, how original synthesizers and keyboards were built uh, back in the day. Um, and these are just some oscillator chips. Uh, but we have several weeks worth of um, instructions on how to build things. And this board is kind of the culmination of it. Uh, it starts off over here with oscillators that create the sound. And then it goes through um, simple logic chips to make the sound different, to add rhythms to it, to add things like drum sounds, um, and ends up with output to powered speakers. Nice. And uh, display output. What was that? Display output. This one? Yeah, how does it display? Oh, this is audio, audio only. So, audio based display? How do you, well, how do you get so it? So, these are there? separate projects, right? Okay. So, this one is uh, a Freescale microcontroller. This is called the TT 3.1. Um, and these display panels are actually made for like LED billboards and large displays, but you can buy just a single one. Um, and you How can much see is it's, it? Uh, it's about forty or fifty dollars, depending on where you get it from. It's kind of like I'm, a nice LED. Yeah, device. I'm guessing at the markets here in Shenzhen, you can get them for quite a bit less. Uh, but I don't, I don't have much experience with that. So you put um, this in front, and then. Yeah, this is just a piece of uh, frosted acrylic. So did you win a competition with that, or what, uh, is I, that an example? What is I it? didn't, but a friend of mine named Lewis actually um, came up with this idea. He calls it Smart Matrix, and he sells them. They're made to go inside of like a square picture frame. Um, but I've seen them displaying like a lot of video, uh, and I thought, how can I make it a little more interactive? And so I just soldered on this wire so that I could add uh, Atari a joystick, which you can get from you know eBay or, or other sources. Is Pac-Man open source? No. Yeah. Well, how do, you, how do you get all the game engine in there? Um, so I I built the game engine from scratch. There's a really great website called Pac-Man Dossier that has gone and researched how the original Pac-Man was written, and it's really fascinating because there's like AI for the ghosts on how they chase you. And it's really simple AI, but it's so clever that when you play, you feel like they're actually intelligent. It's scary, right? Yeah, and so I think doing a project like this where you walk through something that's already been created, it makes you grow and learn and, and think about how other people are doing things. You reverse engineer Batman. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't reverse engineer it. Someone else has done that, but I followed the rules and the things they discovered and, and made them in code. What is Hackaday? So Hackaday is a um, website for engineers and engineering enthusiasts. So people that are excited about learning about electronics and building electronics can go there, get skills, talk with each other, ask for help, share advice, that sort of thing. Do you work with that? Yeah, I'm the managing editor of Hackaday.com. All right. And we also have a community website called Hackaday.io that has 72,000 registered users that are building these sorts of things. So for instance, like the audio projects, that's project 5,992. So you can go and look through thousands and thousands of these projects. You can build them or just be inspired by them. And all these guys can get jobs at any design house here in Shenzhen, right? You know, that's an interesting question. One of the things I tell people is, um, this is almost like an online resume. So if you build these things um, and document what you're building, it shows that you can engineer, it shows that you can write about it, and it shows that you're a social person. And those are all very uh, valuable things for employers. You've been around Shenzhen for? Um, yeah, I've been here for about a week now. And so Shenzhen is pretty uh, cool. Yeah, Shenzhen There's lots of design design going on here for hardware. Yeah, I'm, I'm really shocked by the number of engineers that I've met from all different countries and the interesting stories that they have. Um, I also had the chance to go to the markets and see what's going on there. The um, Huashang Bay? Yes, Huashang Bay. Yeah. So it's, called. So, uh, it's amazing to see where there's a, like, a used area where you can go and see people are actually repairing things and putting them up for sale. There's new area, blocks and blocks and uh, levels and levels of uh, really interesting things involving electronics. So if people are bored somewhere else in the world, they should just come and live and work in Shenzhen and show off what they can do and they'll get a job, right? Um, I think that there's a good chance that if you're motivated, that will happen. Cool. demonstration in certain circuit bending like a couple of like really simple uh, logic gate based oscillators and then you know two of them and then people can just essentially make like random connections 
and try to produce meaningful sound. So it's like circumventing on a big scene, but on a red nice. line. Where are you from? Where are you based? Uh, I live in Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and you? Uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Cool. All right.